here with us. Pretzels are yeah. 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 Pretzels and wine are good? Pretzels? Yeah, yeah come on. Yeah. Like, I eat pretzels with beer. You guys, why do you, why do you unsalted pretzels? Who does that? We're, we're healthy. We're, yeah, healthy. we're trying to help you out. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Something's never gone out of our skin. Am I allowed to swear on this thing? Yes. That's the best. Bet we the, need you to swear. That's the best part about this. It's definitely weird that we're about to let us not have salt. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, some things, some yeah. things are worth uh, Give those the case being diet, sure. dietary, uh, losing the weight on me. Dom keeps inviting me to DraftKings contest. <laughs> How long ago? How long did you go? 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. Pickle? Mm -hmm. Alright, so you, um, let me know when you're ready to run. Ready? It goes 30 minutes, but it also never stops. Gotcha. Folks, we are live here at Studio D tonight, joining the wrecking crew. We have Sal Capaccio, who is now the second guest ever to be a call-in and live in studio. Who's the first? Brad Ryder. You know... My nemesis, Brad. I'll tell you, I love Brad Ryder. I actually, Brad was at WGR in 2007. He left WGR, and mm -hmm. actually, that's how I applied at WGR originally, because I knew he had left. And so Brad Ryder's the, one of the reasons why you're at GR. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and when his job came open, I applied. I was in Florida. It was 2007. And they basically called me and said, well, you probably got no chance for this. You're down there. You're not really doing I wasn't teaching a coach at the time. Had not, not done radio in a while. And they're like, ah, you know, you haven't done radio, but... They gave me a shot, they liked me, and they said keep in touch, and then a few years later, I got hired. Amazing. Also tonight- I love you, Brad, thank you. Love you, Brad Ryder, thank yeah. you very much. Also tonight in studio, Topher, Maniac, DJ Supreme, and Producer Burrs. Tonight's show sponsor, Rock Bottom. Why? Two for one drink specials, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Let's go. So, Sal, we all know you're born and raised in Western New York. Mm -hmm. You bleed orange. You love the Bills and Sabres. But let's talk about where you really started. Down in Florida, <laughs> let's talk sports with Donnie G. One of my friends wanted me to mention this to you. Like, I don't know who your friend is, but he knows a lot of stuff. That's not where I started, though. Here's, not where here's, you started. But here's, here's a little unknown fact. I get people tell me all the time. Man, I used to watch you when you started down doing your podcast in your mom's basement down in Florida because I did this web show and... I broke the news. The T.O. was coming to Buffalo and I, my name got really big. I was, the, I was the person who broke that around the country. Oh, are you serious? Absolutely. That's how people got to know me in Buffalo. Like, oh, I was all the first athletes, person. too. That's, that's yeah, I was the first person in Buffalo and first person in the, in the country, in the world, to report the Bills were going to, they were interested in signing Terrell Owens. Can you tell us your source? No. Okay. I could, but I didn't have to kill you. Wow. We don't want to do that here on the yeah, we're no, not that. Let's wait until at least 25 minutes in for that before we get I, really going. You guys probably wouldn't mind that. But anyway, um, so... Anyway, I uh, I was in radio TV. I went to Syracuse University. I was at this little radio station, blah, blah, blah. I left to become a teacher and coach, but I kept my hand in it, and I started podcasting when podcasting was kind of unknown, yes. and I started doing a video webcast, and I got a little tip from somebody I know. The Bills were interested in signing Terrell Owens, and I took a leap of faith. I put it out there, and I knew people would say, ha-ha, who's this idiot down in his mom's basement? He's a no crap, but sure enough, it happened. My name blew up. In the meantime, I was already trying to get back to Buffalo, and that kind of put me there. Wow. Let's talk sports with Donnie G. Don Gershio is a Western New York native. Okay. Who was one of the, he was, he used to sell Cooper and, um, uh, I can't remember the other, it was Cooper uh, hockey equipment, or Bauer maybe, but it was like Cooper hockey equipment. And this is like the 70s, all right? And 
he had an opportunity to lead them to join a little company to become a sales rep at a company called Nike. And he took it. And he made millions and millions of dollars. And after, in the in 1980s, he got his, he basically was bought out, his contract, he took a you know, severance package or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he retired to, and he was living at the time in Florida, but he bought a place in Sarasota and he had, and he really always wanted to be in the media, so he bought a TV station. And it was on, it was called Blab TV, it was on Comcast Cable in Florida. And I was doing radio down there and I got a call one day and said, hey, they're trying to get somebody from down here in the media to just go on this TV show. It's a Thursday night show, it's a talk show, so I went up there and Donnie and I hit it off and he loved me. And every week I became a regular on this TV talk show in Sarasota, Florida, Let's Talk Sports with Donnie G. And he's still a dear friend of mine to this day. Wow. So you say you took a leap of faith with that T.O. news. I did. So you didn't, like it wasn't confirmed, it was kind of like a... Well, here's what I mean by leap of faith is I, no, it was, I mean, you have to trust your sources sometimes, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, the, the source I had was somebody I knew would not lie to me. There you go. But, 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 but I also know that things change. That person might not lie to me, but at the same time, maybe suddenly things break down and it never gets out there even talking. Now all of a sudden, I'm the guy who never gets a job in Buffalo because I made something up when I really didn't. Obviously I did, and it was true, and it happened, and suddenly I was on Sirius NFL radio that weekend. I was, I was credited by all the TV stations in Buffalo. They were calling me. They had no idea who I was. You can Google it. Sal Capaccio, Tara Lowens. There's a pro football talk story still with my name on it. Wow. And who, who contacted, contacted you from Buffalo? From like, potentially from Buffalo? Um, do you mean to move back? Yeah. Or, um, yeah, like, move back. And well, like, I had already been in contact with WGR. This is after I had applied for Brad's job after he left. Okay. And they knew it. And the program director, Andy Roth at, at WGR, mm -hmm. um, he called me that day. He's like, congratulations. You just broke the biggest sports story in Buffalo in years. And well, it was. It we, was. Still, we still remember where we were. That night. I remember yeah. that night. That was a Saturday, right? It was, my, it was my anniversary too. It was uh, my uh, my wife and I. It was our it would be our six year anniversary. It was two thousand nine, right? And, um, March seventh. March seventh. We over right in the eighth. Our anniversary is the eighth. I was at the casino that night down in Florida. Playing craps. We were playing, no, they only had cards. Not, not, they didn't have dice at this casino. And we were and we we won a ton of money that night. My wife and I. And on top of it, I broke the TO news. It was just like the greatest night. It and was. All of a sudden, I, my name started blowing up everywhere. Anyway, Andy Roth, I kept in contact with him, and he's the guy that told me, if you ever come to Buffalo, I'll give you a job, but he wasn't about to bring me there. Well, one thing led to another. I really wanted to move up. My wife was changing jobs. I called him, and I said, you told me to give me a job, so he did, and I started at the bottom, and moved my way up. And now you're? On the sidelines of the NFL team, flying. Amazing. So the it's a dream team, a lot of private jet. Team. What are private, private jet. Private it's, jet. It's charter. Come We're on. relatively <laughs> young here. What are your initial thoughts of uh, Studio D? I love this. Um, I feel like with the music coming out, like I was at a wedding for a minute. I got wine. I got roses here. Um, I got unsalted pretzels. Who has unsalted pretzels yeah. with wine? I mean, I think look, someone you said pretzels, pretzels are good with wine. They're very good. They're very good. But they're unsalted. And you guys told me. I said, why is this? And they said, well, we're like really health conscious. Now look, no offense, you're not a bunch of Lou Ferrignos around here. You know who Lou Ferrignos is? The Hulk. Oh yeah, OG right. Hulk. I mean, you're not that you're really big guys and unhealthy, but. I'm like, what do you mean to help? Come on, man. So much we're, we're bulking up to the winter sale. You can tell. We're bulking up. Someone told me once. Someone told me once that Salsa knew smoking. So I, 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 I don't. Yeah. Know. It wasn't a very reliable person. Maybe I don't know. It's still in know. my head. Uh, That's all right. I do like my cab. You guys, you played that right. Good job. Now, yeah. how does how does this setting compare to being in Cincinnati under an umbrella, tucked next to Josh Reed in the rain? Whew. That was the roughest weather I had done a sideline game in. Um, really? It was really bad. At halftime, I had to get the one of the trainers from the Bills staff to give me rain pants, and I had to take off my khakis, which were stuck to my leg. Uh, hey, you fly on the team. <laughs> you fly on the plane. You're yeah. part of the team. You know what I'm it's saying, cool. yeah, like they have, those trainers, you know, they gotta help you out too. They, you guys they, are they, one. It starts with one. It, it might be you. That, that's now, you. You're the one. Now they ain't gonna give me any rain pants if it if it means not Jerry Hughes not having any rain pants. Oh no, I'll tell you that. priorities. <laughs> if but, Jerry Hughes needs your pants, he's taking he them right off. You he, said that's exactly right. But I did do that. It was so wet. I'm not kidding. At the end of the game, first time ever, I had to do this. I had to go in the locker room, take off all of the clothes I had on, have on, put my suit back on that I wore on oh, the plane to get to the. Oh. And, and then and do my job in the locker room after, but that's how, how what I was. Jesus. All right, so real quick, before we get to Bill's box, it is not about the would be, not about the could be. Talk to us about your should be business venture. The 
Does this mean something I would like to be in business on? He's thinking. Yes. Okay. I didn't know what you meant. Like I thought, I thought maybe there was something I didn't know about myself. We, we let's just say we have a source. Hmm. Your should be, in all caps, business venture. And to be honest, this source is pretty high up there, but as you know, things are subject to change. So I, we don't I, want to go out there with the claim yet. Are you talking about my podcast? No? Oh, we no, don't. That's right. right. A powerhouse. Sad, We're asking sad, you. Sad, South Sports and Stuff Podcast. Yeah, of course. We have it's that. something else that you're a true seasoned professional at. Uh, you're good. You're business, good. Business venture. Hmm. Um... I don't know. I, mean, I, 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 know, I, know I do have a lot of talents. I'm a drummer. Cool. Um, Big time percussionist. Yeah. I don't know. I, you guys have me Wait, So, professional wedding dancer? <laughs> Jeremy White probably told you that. Um, if he did, I... My wife, my wife tells people that they should rent me out for their weddings. Just to go and entertain and have a good time and dance and be part of the party. party. Not, to, not to like be on the mic or anything. Not to like hold court. Just to be there. And dance and liven up the party because I love to dance at weddings and so, I love life. And when Footloose comes on, I'm just going. So first one of us that gets first one of us that gets married, we'll call him. I'm there. We can invite you as the life of the party guy. Just just invite me. I'll be there. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yes. real quick, check your phone. Okay. It's the world premiere of this picture. Uh oh. Go to the train wreck train wreck Twitter. Just tweet it out. Wow. Is that a train wreck exclusive is site? It, it, Everyone make sure to cite train wreck sports. Is it? Um, what is the exact Twitter handle? You're tagging it. We have tra- at, train rec- at Trainwreck Sports, no O. He's okay. gonna be tagged. It's like too long to get into the sweater. Train Trainwreck Sports. I could, I can get internet down here, right? Or yeah. Oh, we got some, <laughs> we got some Wi-Fi here in Chita Vegas. Hey, so come on. Let's go. Is this considered Chita Oh yeah. It's my home. It's my hometown. Really? That is it. That is my. That is me. That is me dancing to Ice Ice Baby. Oh, man. Vanilla Ice at Jeremy White's wedding. Folks, retweet this. Go to the train wreck sports That's Twitter. It. World Phenomenal. premiere train wreck like, I, I said not to grab my crotch, so I don't know if I like that. Can okay. I tell you what though? I saw that picture and I go, is that Sal Capaccio or is that Dwayne Johnson? That's what I said. I I was actually doing do you smell what Sal is cooking right there? Oh my gosh. Sure. Actually, so do you see the bottle in there? There's a there's a there's a bottle at my feet. Blue light? It was a it was basically a spin the bottle, whoever it lands on dances. It's, uh, it lands on me, and I had to go out in the center and dance. That's what happened. That was at Jeremy's wedding, which is amazing. His beautiful wife Molly. They had an awesome wedding, and afterwards, and Jeremy said, "Like, oh my God, like people should just have sell at their wedding." My wife said, "Yes." I always tell people they should rent him out for a wedding. I'll take the money. All right. You guys don't have to pay me though. I'll just come to your wedding. You would. Well, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And it just all I need is some food, some wine, and a dance floor. Unsalted pretzels. Yeah. A nice bottle of cash. Salt the pretzels. All right, we got you. All right, so let's get into what everyone wants to hear. Bills box preview, huge game this weekend. Obviously, the big news this whole week has been the situation with Jameis Winston. Um, I'm going to ask you right away, who would you rather face as a Bills fan this weekend, Fitzpatrick or Winston, a bang up Winston? You know, I've gone back and forth on this. Obviously, healthy, I'd rather face Fitz. But yeah. considering how banged up he seems to be, I think Winston's the answer. Yeah. I mean... If he's gonna throw tomorrow for the first time all week, you know that would be a Friday. That's a, that's a tough deal. I mean, he's already got a little bit of accuracy issues this year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the rhythm seems to be not there. And if you go a whole week without throwing, and there's seven days removed from an AC joint sprain on your throwing shoulder, I think you want to take advantage of that. Yeah. But because with Fitz, you just never know. He could be awful, but he could do what he did last year on a Thursday night and just throw some jump balls to Mike Evans, who he winds up going, winds up going mm-hmm. to get him. So. As much as I'd be confident if they were facing Fitz, I think the answer there is a banged-up Jameis Winston considering what he's dealing with. And I know one of your biggest pet peeves is Fitz giving you nightmares when it comes I to I still Fitz. have nightmares from that part of the game. If you, if you take back the penalties, he threw for like over 400 yards last yeah, year. Against right. That was insane. Um, now, but we're also talking about pet peeves, Sal, and we know a big pet peeve of yours is when people come in Guns a blazing on Twitter, oh. 140 characters strong. Or 280 oh, now. now. It's more oh yeah, some people with 280. Some I people are double pack. I got 280. You have 280? I do. You haven't been abusing like, that at all. We don't even no, know. No, I, I, like twice I did. I, cause when I first got it, I kind of said, "Hey, boom, <laughs> uh, look at this," and I and I made a joke out of it because I kept writing something I never finished just to show that I had a bunch of twit letters. <laughs> But when Lorenzo Alexander said what the guys were going to do for the community and all that, I, I used that whole platform to show right. that. That's what I did. But anyway. Um, Shame yeah. on you for using that platform response. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, no, but you know, you see them, they come in guns blazing. 
all of you Buffalo media. They label all you guys yeah. together, whether it's the radio WGR guys, the guys on TV I during like the day, or, you know, the sports guys at 11 at night. You know, yeah, you guys, I mean, to be honest, I think your agendas are all entirely different. I mean, you know, as professionals, you guys are, you know, giving out to your demographics and doing completely different things. But with that said, when it angers, when it angers at Frank and Cheek Dewaga, he just comes in guns blazing at you. Yeah, I think I muted him. But, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's going to be very ironic soon. Okay, well, here's the thing. Um, it would be the same thing as if you guys, one of you got a tweet that says, man, all these guys who do these web shows, like, you're just different than somebody else who might do a web show, right? If you want to call that what this is, right? Um, but all those bloggers, like, it's lumping everybody into something. It's, it's right? a lot of ignorance. I, it's, it's, not just, it's not just Buffalo Media. I get upset when people say, well, WGR thinks this because one host said something. Like, we all have our own thoughts. Like, Mike Show and I disagree on a lot of things. And Howard and I disagree on things. We also agree on a lot of things. But when you lump everybody in together, I don't think it's fair. And if someone says something you disagree with, you should say, well, Jeremy said that, or Sal said that, or Vic Carucci said that. And that's how it should be to me. I get it. Like, it's easy to lump in because, you know, when you're just, when you have all of these people you follow, when you have all these people you read or listen to, you kind of get it all together in one aggregate form, and then you kind of lash out if something's bothering you because maybe people didn't ask the right question that you wanted or something. I get it, but I don't think it's fair. That's what it is. Of course. So... Back to the box bills real quick. Ten offensive linemen on the bills right now. Ten. How many tackles? Five. Got depth. Yeah. So, is there are people are teams asking around for Cordy Glenn? And if they are, what is the, what what is the price? The I don't know the price. I they are asking, okay. um, but I don't know if those conversations go very far. If a team was to acquire Cordy Glenn, they would have to take on nine million dollars salary it's base okay. salary, and the Bills would have a nine million dollar cap hit next year for the accelerated bonus that they've already paid him in the guaranteed mm -hmm. money. So it really becomes problematic. I think if it were really simple and the Bills could just trade Cordy Glenn for a high pick, a second rounder, maybe even a third rounder somewhere there, I think they would do it. I think they like Deion Dawkins enough. Cordy's a, a Whaley guy. I mean, we all have seen that they've made this shift. It's, you know, they're, they're moving out with the Whaley people and bringing their own guys in. But I just think the financial ramifications for both sides make it tough to do. And then to justify it by giving a high pick, if a team said, well, we'll give you a seventh rounder for them, maybe they do it. To, with the with being able to pay for it, but I don't think all those things mesh together. And it looks like finally Jordan Mills might be on the bench this week. There's a chance. We'll see. I think Dion's gonna maybe <laughs> start playing some right tackle. Um, you know, it, Jordan. Every time it seems like Jordan is gonna be put on the bench, he steps up and starts to show himself in practice a little bit, mm -hmm. and they, they they leave him out there. I, I I just think it's curious that they haven't figured out their five yet. And I don't know if that's going to be yeah, after, time. At, not after the trade deadline, whatever it is. At some point, I think it's got to be. you got to settle on five because I think that's part of the reason the run game hasn't been going. Our organizations love indecisiveness. The Bills can't pick their five starting linemen. The Sabres can't pick a <laughs> captain. It's about everybody being a leader. It's about everybody stepping up. It starts with it's, one. It's, it's, I guess it's all about the process. We're about trust the process. process. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Let's go. So, Sal, in general, how... How do you think this team handled the bye week with, with McDermott? I know he wanted to keep some of the players around, or the, the coaching staff. Um, the, the Bills are notoriously bad. This is when they start to tail off in October or November, mm -hmm. the crippling Chiefs loss. How do you think the team handled the bye week? What have you seen? Anything well, in they did a lot of self-scouting, which every team does. You know, coaches go back, they look at themselves, they say, well, what are we doing? Where, what tendencies do we have? They try to go away from that. But what I found refreshing and interesting is a lot of the players talked about doing their own self-scouting. They went and looked at themselves over four weeks and said, what have I done? I don't know if you, you read the story I wrote about Tredavious White at WGR550.com, shameless plug. But I um, spoke with him in the locker room, and you know, <laughs> a, after, the, after the Cincy game, when he got beat, some, he, he, he bounced back, but he, he got beat, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it was not a good performance. Um, he was nowhere to be found in the locker room. And some of the media said, oh, we're talking amongst ourselves, oh, you know. He gets beat, he doesn't show up, you know, he doesn't show, he's yep. obviously not taking accountability, you know, he has one bad game after good games. Some people thought, oh, maybe he's injured, we don't know about it. What he told me was, and I thought this was really interesting, and I'm super honest of him, and I think even vulnerable, and I, I appreciated it, he said he cried after the game. And the reason why he left was he didn't want the media to see him like that, because he was so upset that he thought he cost his team the two touchdowns, the one that they scored on with A.J. Green, yeah. and the one that they caught, and then the next play they scored. And he said that was it. And he said he looked back over the bye week at all of his film over the first five weeks. And here's Tredavious White, who was the Defensive Rookie of the Month. He's on track to have a really yeah. great season. 
He said he's been sucky and terrible, and if teams see some of the things he's doing, they're going to take advantage of him. And he said, that's why I'm going to have the best performance of my season this weekend, and I'm going to be much better. Seems a little too harsh. One a little bit, right? I mean, that's... But yeah. he's competitor. Yep. He's hired himself. This is his livelihood, right? And that's what he, he does. But that's the kind of people that Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean wanted on this team. That's the kind of people they keep bringing on this team. Guys who really take pride in their craft, take pride in their work, take pride in the, the playing for their teammates. If you listen to Eddie Yarbrough or Zay Jones, two new guys on this team, both of them, they will always tell you how much they don't play for themselves, they play for their teammates. Like it's, it's always just, it's like a talking point. Awesome. Like, I'm not catching that ball for me. I'm catching that ball for Andre Holmes. I'm catching that ball for Charles Clay. Zay, Eddie Yarbrough always says, when I run down on a kickoff, I'm doing it for Jerry Hughes. So I want to make sure he knows that I'm doing my job right. You know who overstates constantly their shortcomings? The New England Patriots. So that was what struck me most when I was reading that article. That sounded like something that would have came from a New England Patriots player. Right. Constant reflection saying they're basically the worst, yada yada, things like that. They constantly credit the opponent. They sell themselves constantly short. You know, they said, I think Bill Belichick was talking the Jets were going to be a huge challenge last week. And they were 14 nothing, but the Patriots came back quickly in that game. It just, it, you know, you can see the culture change really starting to occur. I and, I mean, yeah, when you see, when you buy into the fact that the team is a process, you are going to feel a sense of doubt and self-accountability in this league when, you know, you allow a couple of big plays. And something, you know, we saw a couple years ago with Richie and Cagnino and Jonathan Martin not being like an absolute alpha male in this league mm -hmm. is something that still isn't really accepted. So, I mean, it speaks volumes that he buy, buys in so much and is so invested in the team that basically he didn't want to see them come up short in any way. Well, we have debates all the time. I don't know if you guys know this, but... It, they, they've been pretty heated sometimes too that um, I'm very much of a belief that culture does matter in a locker room uh, I work with guys who don't uh, Jeremy doesn't believe in culture he says that if you win you save good culture it's easy winning, winning is what matters and yep. that's what it is and Mike kind of believes the same thing and that's fine I think it's great to have all those opinions um, coming from my experience in life in playing in locker rooms coaching in locker rooms being around all different kinds of personalities I believe culture does matter I don't think it's the most important thing talent is talent is the most important thing you need to win no doubt about it but I think a, having people who aren't pulling for the same goal can tear a team apart. I think culture to me is just having people who understand what their expectations are from their leadership and pulling for the same goal. There's no such thing as good culture or bad culture. That is winning. But it's just your culture, whatever yours is. You, this show has a different culture than my show does when I'm on Saturdays. But as long as you guys all know what your responsibilities are and you're trying to do it, the same way, I think that's how you can be successful. But if one of you guys are like, well, screw you, and I want to do my own thing, and he does it, you're never going to be successful. And I think that's the, that's the key to that. Um, going back to Richie and Jonathan Martin in that, that situation, not specifically, but look, the locker room, an NFL locker room is made up of 53 men, all with different socioeconomic backgrounds, different colors, different races, different creeds, different different sexual orientations, I'm sure. You know what I mean? Even though we don't, you know, they don't purposely talk about that. Uh, different um, religions, everything. And that's why culture matters in an NFL locker room because you don't have to have all alpha males. You're going to have guys who are soft-spoken, who want to shy away from the spotlight. The trick is that you have to accept that player and your teammate for who he is mm -hmm. and know that at the end of the day, we're all still here together trying to do the same thing. And that, that's exa about this train. We're all here doing that's the right. exact same thing for this show that's right. over the past year now. And if it wasn't for every single person, that's a year, huh? We started last September, so good for you, thirteen guys. months. That's a good culture right there. It means you it you're is. on the same page. And you know, there's gonna be times in your life where somebody's gonna have to either move or get married, get a job opportunity, go somewhere, and that's great. And you do that, but it's you you don't let it, it don't let it become, you know, a divisive nature in your show because you have to understand that everybody's still different and they all have different yep. roles and different jobs in life. Exactly. We got a guy, Andy Olson, shout out who Helps us out from Cleveland, Ohio. That's awesome. Every week, sending us ideas, new input, things to change on this show, and just like that. Yeah, some of the best Cleveland. ideas we've had for these programming has come from Andy and Cleveland. It's amazing. Excellent. Andy and Cleveland. Andy, hello. You're on the air. Go ahead. So, you know how you said you didn't know what to expect tonight? Yeah, there we go. I think oh, it's time to change it up a little bit. Let's go. Yep. He's oh, been yeah. very fortunate I'm so far. The table. He's been very fortunate so far, okay. and it's time for the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune. Hot. Brought to you by... D'Agostino's. By the way, Sal, you're Italian. How do you pronounce that? Is it D'Agostino's? D'Agostino's? Depends on how they want it, but I would say D'Agostino. D'Agostino. That's what I would say. Al's been calling because it Because I know... Calls. That's what you said, though, Petty, right? No, Al's been calling it D'Agostino's. That's okay, because I have friends, but I have, I have friends that are... You could say D'Amico or D'Amico. 
right? But I would say mm-hmm. Dion, though. That's very true. So I'll trust the Italian in the room. I'll say Dion and Cena. And that's what I said. I would tell. What about you want to record? Take a look. We got some categories. One and done. Degenerate sale. Okay. Fun facts. Sideline sale. Let's rep that. All right. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Oh, yeah. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, free space. You hit the empty one. Free space? They said what? Okay, we got great quotes from around the Buffalo culture. All right. We're going to see if South can We're going to start off with a, uh, with, a, with a lot ball. For a Twitter fiend like you, this should be easy. All right. I just tell you who said this? Yeah, we yeah. Gotta tell you, you got to tell us who this in, in this case, In this case, who tweeted it? It's someone, it's someone in the Buffalo landscape. Okay, I That's got all you. We can tell it doesn't you. have to be an athlete. Exactly. Gotcha. I know what we do on the farm when a male can't control his own rage. Hashtag, lucky I'm not there. Hashtag, act like an animal, get treated like one. Think of, wow. Oh my god, do we have a stumper? Think of, think of primetime Bills games. Recently. Oh, this is a big recent prime history. Time I know game. what happens. Recent history primetime Bills games? Yes. Recent history. Yep. Um, I would say what? one of Something? Tyrod's great performances. Oh, Tyrod's oh, arguably his best performance. Yeah. yeah. What happened yeah. in that Seattle? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that here is, he comes. That is Dan Carpenter's wife. Yep. Kayla Carpenter. Very Sal nice. comes in hot. He Very finally nice. finds the zone. He, hey, I got you. We I got it. you. It's slow start, but this train wow. doesn't stop. We're gonna roll. That was a tough yeah. one to start with. Oh wait, well we're not giving you softballs. We know that you're. I mean, you know, come on. All right. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The free space is obviously another thing. Oh man, Sal's really been working out. He's bragging about it before he came over here. Ah. The wheel's about to spin off. Frank and Cheek to Vegas. Oh, oh no! <laughs> we told you you were gonna regret that. He's got him muted. What does that mean? You have to go right now. Much? You have to go right now, and you have to tweet. Frank and Cheek Dewaga on his most recent, like, relevant tweet. Here we go. Let's go, Sales Diamond. Here we go. Frank and Cheek Dewaga. Al, make sure, he, make sure he's checking. I, had, sure I, he's hope, checking. I hope he's... Wait, it's like you guys Frank. know Frank? Do you know Frank? Oh, we all know him. We've we, 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 we we tried, tried, tried to get him on the show. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah. No, but do you know him? No. Do you know him? No, I'm asking you. Seriously. Oh, no, 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 no. We do not know him. We do not know him. If you can get him on the show, do we know his most recent What's his Twitter handle, Frank? Yeah, Frank, just No, no, his handle is WGRFans716. Yeah, WGRFans716. I don't make sure. Sal, how do you not know this guy? I hope he's last. Sal, are going to be able to see his Twitter account? He got him. I am. I have What's his last tweet? He does have a minute. He's a bird. Okay. All right, so Sal. His last regular tweet or reply? No, no, something that's relevant. You have to give a hot take on his most recent tweet, Sal. His, Frank's recent tweet is, someone wrote, Kim Martin must have been pro-tank. He was saying why she, was saying why she left. And he, he responded, no, but he was good. He responded, nope, she's going to the Washington Post, not WGR, which is great. Right? So I'm going to say... say okay, he's going to say something. <laughs> so Don't let the Cabernet get the best seat yourself. All right, so, nope, let's see. Um, Kim Martin must have been pro-tank. So the person saying that's why she's leaving the paper, because we know the paper was anti-tank, I guess, of right? Course, of saying, course, no nope, doubt. She's going to the Washington Post, not WGR. Hmm, what can I write about that? Um... I could just, I like him a lot. She's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hold on, let's not do anything insensitive. We want, what we were talking about was irrelevant to you. If it's about the bills or something, scroll no, up. No, but I could, right. I could, I could, I could. Oh, you're gonna chime in? Let's chime in, let's chime in. Frank wants to hear it. And, um. Send, you, you could just send, say, like, send, send Frank. You could say anything you want. Send Frank a <laughs> Greyhound <laughs> bus to, like, New England. Um, no, no send Tone Act there. Um. <laughs> I would say I was gonna say something about the we would take we would take him if she wanted to come to WGR. You know oh yeah, I mean? she's real, she's good. Hashtag come on this train. Hashtag come on this train. Hashtag this train never stops. That's what we need. Well, I have to do it after the reply. Of course. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, I'm, th- I'm still thinking about that. Nope, she's going to the Washington Post, not not WGR. I can't believe you hit Franklin Chief Duaga on the second one. And he, he, he <laughs> not WGR. Oh, he loves it. Yet, but yet he wrote. He lives on WGR. Yeah, but he wrote he's a WGR fan. But then he kinda he kinda but he kinda Isn't that isn't that ironic? So, isn't that he, <laughs> he, weird. he only turns off WGR when there's tank talk. So whenever Jeremy's on so this might be the only, funniest only thing. I just wrote we'd take her. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Right? That'll do it. Hashtag, hashtag this train doesn't stop. This train never stops. When Frank wakes train. up tomorrow, he'll, he'll read 
read that. It's gonna be Nathan never Day. stops. Does, will he know what that's about? Yes, because I tweeted him. Oh Is yeah, Frank's, Frank's on the train. We take her. This train never stops. Done. All right, good. Hey, right. it's two for two. We gotta go at least one more. Then yeah, we'll get one, back to general discussion here. One more spin here. Yep, yep. Okay. You ready? Oh yeah. Softer, softer one. No softer. Hey, a little, a little touch never hurt nobody. Oh, pickle juice, pickle juice. Oh, not pickle juice. Got it. Oh, no. Oh. Name that orange. Oh. Okay, this is you, Al. Big syrup. He's gonna get. He's gonna give you one of each. I, I I'll tell you this. I am a really big Syracuse basketball fan. Not like I don't. I'm not very well versed in football over recent history. Only in the 90s I would be. We got, okay. we, we got you, Sal. Right, so we got two here. Two, okay. We got two named that orange. First one. The basketball is. All-time leading passer in Syracuse football history. All-time leading passer in Syracuse football history? I would say Donovan McNabb. Is that yes or no? No? Um, hold on. Marvin Graves. So I have to go way back then. More recent. Really? More recent? The other one. You know, Ryan Nassib? Yeah. Wow. I'm surprised. I'm really surprised by that. Ryan Nassib. That, that, that was a bear trap. We put that out. Okay, okay. so we know, we know. He's going to say that. I was, 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 was there. Wow. I, I was there when Nassib played, and I still don't realize that. That's crazy. Yeah. 9,600 yards. All right. Before. Number two. Oh, name strong. that orange. Okay. The smallest of commercially available oranges. These little magical citrus fruits are a bit sour and have the magical element of fully edible peels. It's not a mandarin orange, right? No. <laughs> um, mini orange? I don't know. We warned you. We warned you about coming on this show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not up in my... I did work at Bell's back in the day, which became what? Like Jubilee? And, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? I'm a big but produce I, but guy. But I was not a produce guy. I was just a stock boy. So, I so you were in grocery. I was in grocery, yes. All right. I yeah. got to tell you a funny story about that. They used to do the schedule, and they have guys' names, right? And I worked there. My friend Chris did. My friend Kevin did. And they have us on the schedule. And I always thought... There was a guy, whose his name was Dave, and I always thought his last name was Haba. It was said Dave T. Haba. I'm like, that, what, why is his name Haba? Oh, no. Because what it was was they were telling him he was working in Health and Beauty Aids. Oh, um, no. I literally thought his name was Haba, but it wasn't. It was Dave and Health and Beauty Aids. Pretty Haba. Do you know his last name? I don't know his last name. Oh, Hashtag Haba. Oh, it's Haba. Haba. Anyway, what was the answer? Kumquats. Yeah, that's a weird word. And then it's actually it's, it's, it's an actual orange. orange. I know. Can, how many oranges can you name? Just out of curiosity. I, I can't. Navels. He no. said mini oranges. Just just mini orange. orange. Okay. Is that even an orange? So the only know. orange stuff he knows is that's like, what I would have said the same thing. The only orange I know is like you know Lawrence Moten and Carmelo oh, yeah. Anthony and those guys. What do we got? We got one more. Or do we want to sell? Yeah, let's give a little more spin. Final spin of the night. Final spin. How'd you guys pick one? We will. I say you want to pick one for you. How about you just pick one you like? All right. Hold on. Let's see what you get. Sideline sale. Okay, this is the one we've been waiting for. Oh, no, all right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got right. his wet khakis on. So what's that, yeah. you know, constantly, John Murphy and Mark Kelso, they're cutting you for that exclusive. Yes. Okay, because you've got it. You're on the sideline, okay? But what happens when the train goes off the rails a little bit and something unexpected happens on the Buffalo Bills field, okay? We're going to cue you up with a scenario. Okay. And we're going to cut to you on the sideline. Okay. And then you're going to tell us what's happening on the field right now, okay? All right, let's do the it. The following scenario is pregame this Sunday, 12.55 p.m., you're on the field, and you see Ryan Fitzpatrick and Jameis Winston playing a game of chess on the sideline to decide who will start this Sunday. Mark Kelso and John Murphy are about to cut it to you. Go ahead, Al. Mark, I don't know what's happening down there. We're about 10 minutes away from kickoff, and it looks like they're bringing out a board game. I can't tell what it is. Mark? Uh, yeah, John. Uh, it looks like they're playing uh, with multiple pieces down there. It's not trouble. It's not sorry. Oh, it looks like they're playing chess. Let's go down to our sideline reporter, Sal Capaccio, to see what's happening. You guys are not going to believe this, but they're literally playing chess on the field. New Era Field has become a chessboard here today, and I think whoever wins this is actually going to start under center for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. My money is on Ryan Fitzpatrick, but James Winston is very, very smart. In fact, I've heard his recall is absolutely amazing. So we're going to see what happens here. Yes, there's the move. I just saw it, guys. Guys, I saw it. Checkmate. James Winston starts today. Winston. James Winston. Winston. That's why they paid me that. That was Good so one. funny. Now we need one more. We need one more. We're gonna do another sideline right. sale. That's a given. That okay. One more. Sale. Big win this weekend. Bills are four and two. 
They're playing the Raiders the week after. You know, Marshawn Lynch struggles a little bit in the first half. All of a sudden, he comes out of the halftime tunnel. He is wearing a Buffalo Bills jersey. And he is back on the Buffalo Bills active roster. And actually, Goodell tweets it out. It's just, it, Goodell just decides it at halftime. Lynch is back on the Bills is what he tweets. Schefter retweets it. It's official. John Murphy and Mark Helso are about to witness. Mark, I, I, I don't think I, I think this is a real retweet. Usually I get faked out on Twitter, but I think this is real. <laughs> Supposedly there are two for one Goose Bomber specials at the rock bottom and Mark Sean Lynch is excited. Mark? Uh, yeah, John, I, I looked at him out of the tunnel and it was blue and white, no longer silver and black. It's crazy. Uh, and officially, let's go down. Let's hear from Sal Capaccio, our official sideline reporter. Sal, what do you got? Yeah, this is unbelievable, guys. I've never seen something like this in my life. I mean, Marshawn Lynch literally is on the field in the Bills uniform. And, oh, by the way, he's not tipping over on Chippewa. I don't know <laughs> what else is going on here. In fact, I heard, in fact, I heard he has his own. I got to check. Make sure he doesn't have a flask under that jersey. Make sure. Because Marshawn Lynch, for some reason, is in a Bills jersey right now. Chippewa's losing it right oh, now. Chippewa's <laughs> literally went nuts. Un, 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 unfurled. Oh, oh, no nice. doubt. Sal, thank you. That was amazing. You're welcome. Thank you. Wow. A successful wheel. Oh, my God. That was. A, I feel so fortunate for that wheel of fortune. Thank you. Oh, well, I think God. we got... You know, all the Applebee's in Buffalo area are also going to make a lot of business this weekend at Marshawn in town. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Didn't he go to Applebee's a lot? Was oh, that of course. That was, that was his David go-to. Buster's oh, yeah. Well, yeah. He loved both. Dave and Buster's, yeah. Oh, I got my wine. Yeah, hit that wine back. Thank you. Are we are we gonna discuss the roses now? Here, here, uh, here who's gonna start in a prediction from Sal before our grand finale? Yeah, let's see, real quick. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Prediction for you? Bills box this weekend? You I know, know everyone's asking me that. And and look at in case you don't know, I don't always pick the Bills to win. I picked them to lose Atlanta and Cincy, both right before the game. I was one and one. They beat Atlanta. I thought they'd lose that game. I thought it would be a, a close game they'd lose, and I picked them to lose 16-14 at Cincy. Can I ask another real quick? Yeah. Did you think Miami had any chance? Against Atlanta? Yeah. No, they were, my, they were my team on my loser pool, and now I'm out. Oh, if they would have lost, I would have been like one of three people left because there was only seven out of like 50 something, and I took them. And I was 17 nothing. Woo! I'm going to the next week. Didn't happen, right? That was such a safe pick. It's insane. I know, right? <clears throat> uh, look it. Here's the thing. This is a game the Bills have to win. Uh, it, this is a spot. If you want to be a good team, you beat you beat a team that's struggling uh, defensively to to. Do a lot of things, get to the passer, they're horrible at it. You beat a team that just went 3,500 miles back and forth, tripped Arizona, and got smoked in the first half. He has to get back on a plane to go 1,500 miles to Buffalo, is dealing with quarterback injuries, has two division games after your game that they're looking ahead to. Oh, yeah. You are coming off a of bye week where you've gotten healthy, you've gotten rested, you've gotten a chance to look at yourself, and you know that you know you are in a situation where the AFC is kind of wide open. So I think the Bills do take advantage of it. I'm going to take the Bills to win this game. Um, I'm going to say 24 to 13. Holy smokes. The Bills red Bills obliterated. Bill, Bills and under. Bills and the the under. under has been killing it for the Bills. What's the over-under? What is the over Probably like 40? 42, yeah. 40, 43, something there. Yeah, especially with Winston hurt. Right. Do you, do you sprinkle any money lines to bet at all? Uh, I've been known to dabble in the past. Oh, yes! Yeah, I haven't, have not, have not, have not really done it in a while. Um, but I have you know, played around a little bit. I've gone to Vegas many times, so yes. How many times? Double digits? Oh, over 20, I believe. Holy. Wow. Uh, I, I just hit three this past weekend. Went to the Knights game. You did? Yeah. It's nice. Good for you. Beautiful. Beautiful. It was, it was the Sabres win from cashing three dimes on that game. Um, so you went to Vegas, you said? Yes. Oh, and um, where'd you stay? Tropicana. Awesome. New York, New York is kind of my, my base Wait, hotel. That was where the, yeah. the pregame was. Um, they, um, I, I don't really, I don't want to sound like big time here, but I don't really pay for Rooms when I go to Vegas anymore. Oh, Mr. Big Time! So, I mean, come on, guys. If you go to Vegas a few times, right, they, 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 oh, they want you back. They want you back. But um, uh, the the best story I'll tell you about Vegas was is um, I well, I have two two of them very quickly. Uh, I was there one time by myself before I was married, and I got on. The, I had a flight to leave at about one o'clock in the afternoon to come back mm -hmm. in Florida where I was living. I got on the craps table at ten o'clock at night. I got off that same craps table at ten o'clock the next morning. Oh. Um, People losing like, losing that whole time, huh? You're, you're no, it was it was totally up and down. I think oh. I left, like I won like 150 bucks total. Like it was oh. way up and down. Huge swings, right? The and then the other thing the was year. the last time I was there was 2013, March of 2013. Okay. Ten year anniversary. I've been married in 2003. My wife says let's go to Vegas, whatever you know. So we go together. 
where we said, let's do it for the tournament. Never been there for the NCAA tournament. So we go out there. And sure enough, Syracuse gets put out west. So while I'm out there, they're playing in California. I can watch the game a reasonable time. It's not like, you know, because not the three-hour time difference, mm-hmm. right? So I go. We can watch Syracuse game and all that. Um, they also go to the Final Four that year, okay? But that was, Howard, that was the um, Brandon Trish year in that. So anyway, 9 o'clock in the morning is when games start in the east. So nice. My wife and I are like, let's go down. We'll grab a couple of drinks. We'll mm-hmm. play a little bit. Watch, we'll watch games. I go down there. We're sitting there. We're about to have some drinks. And she looks at me and says, I think I'm pregnant. And I said, what? Yeah, she said, I think I'm pregnant. She said, but I don't really want to know because we're in Vegas. So I want to have a good time, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, all right, well, um, let's find out later then, I guess. So uh, sure enough, she was, she was pregnant. That was the last time we were there. And my son was born in December. This was March of 2013. So it looks like for you, one of us needs to have a wedding in Vegas. Oh, you have a wedding in Vegas? I'll, I would be there with yeah, you. You have me out there, and we'll do that, and I'll, I'll dance. Odds, and we'll, and odds you can get a do, you play, do any of you play craps? I love it. Don't pass, or pass line, right? That's the way Well, the, the odds are don't play the, is to play the don't pass line, but yeah. I don't do that. Come on. How much fun is that? You wanna, you not wanna any fun at all. Basically, right? you're rooting against everybody. Yeah, but it's not just pass line. Do you play, like, really play? Like, I, I, I'm, I have no idea what I'm doing. When, last time I was in Vegas, so I played the first time I... I, I played at the electronic machine where, the, like, the, the big dice are in, like, the bubble, and right, you just hit right. the button... Just to get the, the gotcha. general rules, I had never even dabbled with. There's craps. nothing. There's nothing better in a casino than a hot craps table. Sale, it is sale, the best. Sale. I won like forty bucks. I was like, Dude. all right, all right. I gotta go to the real. No, I went to oh. the real table. The for my first throw. <laughs> no, no, uh-uh. that's all fast. <laughs> <Wait, laughs> real table. Fast. I didn't know you had to throw the dice to the end of the table. Oh, okay. I was just, I was tossing them into the. Boom. I was just, Boom. I was just dropping them. And the the guy who was from like the middle of China, he he said. What, are the dice too heavy for you? And I was just like, you didn't know. Oh, that's I a great one, one hand below the rail, all the way to the back. I ended up winning like. <laughs> you're, but you're like, it's the biggest party when they hit. It's amazing. Oh, Mr. Papa the, Giorgio, seriously, it's oh, like you know everyone's going nuts because everyone's getting paid. It's oh, like it's absolutely. like when the dealer busts on you know at that yes. table. That's a party too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's a it's a fun time. But anyway, all right. You know what? Up oh, sale. Trainwreck Sports. One thing about Trainer Exports, the land where dreams come true. All right. DJ Supreme, kick it. Sal, you've always wanted the opportunity. It's a magic time. To do what? We'll see. Right. I'm tearing up just thinking about this. <laughs> Very emotional. Should I send it back over here? You guys don't mind send a text right now real quick, do you? Oh, no. I just had to send a text. As, as Joe Green, you would say, send it. Dodgers 1-0 for GM Smoking. By the way, shout out to Brad, who gets paid not to go to weddings. You mentioned that while you were you were uh, pitching your man of the party. He said people actually pay him not to come to the weddings. Oh, well. So. Brad was at that party. He's, he's pretty good. Oh no, Brad Curtin, it's not Brad Curtin. Oh, oh. Alright, alright, ready? Mm-hmm. Alright, Sam. Yeah, Sal. Well, you gotta, you gotta tell Sal what he's doing. So, Sal? Yes. We know one of the things that you've always wanted to do in life, one of your biggest dreams, is to be the host of The Bachelor or Bachelorette. That is true. And welcome. You are officially on set of this, and this is The Bachelorette. Trainwreck Bachelorette. With Katie Stewart, and you are our host, Chris Harrison. Hi, Chris Harrison. Yep, you're Chris Harrison. What do I do? Where do I go? This is the Bachelorette. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Are you the Bachelorette? I am. Okay. So, do I need roses here? To she's, she's picking up. Yeah. Okay. We need one rose. Yep. Just, just one? Just she's one. Just, okay. I'm choosing one. All right. And it's one more. What is your name? I'm sorry. Katie. Katie, okay. All right. I've got some words that I've prepared. Okay, Katie. It's, um, been, it's, been, it's been a long several weeks. Just, it has. You really narrowed it down as three fine gentlemen. You've kissed a hell of a lot of guys. Yeah. I mean, you even had a few into your suite there with the key that you have. So yeah, you have to determine. The fantasy suite. The fantasy yeah, suite. Yeah, I know. Would you like to say anything before you embark on this journey? I think you guys are all great. I just can't take you all. So I've got some things. Um, DeGeneres, God, I've, I've never encountered a person 
was defiled so hard in their life. Literally, so bad at a company picnic, their regional branch was branch shut down. Oh, that was a great day. Literally, it's right here. Maniac, we have the same haircut. I've never met someone with the courage to place a parlay during a moment of silence. And that was just, I'll always, want. I'll always okay. remember. 12 to 5 outs. I don't know what Sharp that means. <laughs> Last but not least, Topher. You're so eccentric, and I've literally never met a guy who's banned from both One Direction concerts and NSYNC. For that reason, you're not going to get the roast tonight because I love them so much. Before you make your final decision, let's remind yeah. everybody we do have to take a commercial here because coming up, it's the most dramatic roast ceremony ever. She okay, already she already told me I'm out though. Like no, I that's right. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, you get yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah. What did he okay. say? What did he say? Go back to Buffalo. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, didn't work out for you. But it's time to leave. You can go to the limousine and cry. I gotta walk. I gotta walk by you. By the way. All right. Sorry. All right. Then. Hey, limo doesn't Chain. sound too bad right now. <sighs> Here's your rose. One rose. One remaining rose. Go ahead. So hard. Um, shoot, but I look at you like a brother, maniac. No, that's not good. <laughs> I look at you as a friend. So um, neither of those were great. Friend zone. Friend, friend zone. zone. Brother zone. What's worse, brother zone or friend zone? Maniac, will you accept this rose? Yes, I will, Al. I'll be yours forever. Really? Yes. <laughs> wow. It's fine. That's... I wanted to go to paradise anyways. That's okay. Hey, I'm Chris Harrison. I get to travel around the world. So if you want to come with me, we can do that. <laughs> See, Chris gets, the, gets all the girls anyway. He wants. You go wherever you want. He, right. he, 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 he does. He does. He does. That's right. Speaking of his pick from all of them, it's like our guest in Buffalo, but another amazing guest, Sal Kabachi. Thank, thank you for Sal joining us on Trainwreck tonight. Thanks, An absolute Sal. pleasure. Thanks, thank Sal. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sal. Kate Stewart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What can you say? So, Sal, what do we say at the end of these shows? Beat the Bucks. This train never stops. Good night now.